Hello and welcome. This is Hex. In this video, I am showcasing my new iron farm. This is called Big Iron. It is a 128 village iron golem farm that is completely automatic. That means it does not have to be built in the spawn chunks. The build is based off of my original build, the Iron Sky, and also takes inspiration from a design and build done by Spire. His video will be in the description where he shows off a 1024 village farm. That's completely insane. I highly recommend checking it out. Just well, I tried to make this build as survival friendly as possible, and it's certainly possible to build in survival mode. It requires a very large number of blocks and a very large amount of patience. Uh, but if you do happen to be crazy enough to want to build this, I will go over at a very high level how everything works, and then we'll also provide this as a world download. So between the two of them, you should be able to build it. This build also does not produce as much lag as you might think. And in fact, in the testing that I've done, it provides no noticeable additional lag over the 32 village version that I have. But enough of my babbling. Let's get to it and I'll show you around. Let's take a look at the villager platform first. This guy is exactly the same as the Iron Sky, so we're going to start at 17 blocks to the east or west, same on both sides, and going on to 27 blocks to the east or west. It's important here that you have three blocks that are solid towards the inside and four blocks that are solid towards the outside and then have jack-o'-lanterns in between. On the bottom floor, solid blocks are good to prevent uh, lighting updates that don't need to happen below here, but then you'll need to use slime blocks on the levels above it. At the top on the roof, um, again, the three blocks over here with an additional five blocks as an overhang on each side. Again, four blocks and then five blocks overhang over there. For the pistons at the top, bring the jack-o'-lantern here up one by one block and then put sticky pistons on the face of both of those with solid blocks in front. And then the solid blocks when the pistons are closed should be directly above the slime blocks. And again, it's the exact same thing on the east side. Also, this will go from 15 blocks to the south. We're on the south side now. And if we travel down here to the north side, 16 blocks to the north. So exactly like the iron sky. Moving on to the temporary villages, this is the A village sitting to the northwest of the build. This door over here is 55 blocks north and west. The villager here is 43 blocks to the north, 43 blocks to the west. And finally, this door here is 28 blocks to the west, 28 blocks to the north. So perfectly diagonal from the center of the build. The B village doors start with a line of doors that align to the west, exactly 29 blocks. So that's one additional block between the, uh, the village platform and these. And we're starting at 14, 6, and 2. Finally, from 8 until 17, we have two rows of doors. Again, that's on the 29 and 28 blocks out to the west. The villager for these doors is out here. He is two blocks to the south and 43 blocks out to the west. Finally, on the east side of the build, this villager here is perfectly aligned to the east, so zero blocks, and 53 blocks to the east. This door right here is 64 blocks to the east, and it's just uh, one door by itself closer to the build. And then two rows of doors at 65 and 66 that go from five blocks to the south to six blocks to the north. Also note that the height for all of our temporary villages is on the upper block of the second story of doors here. That's true for this side and true for the other side. The counting circuit is probably one of the most exciting things about this build. The design is derived from the one you'll find in Spire's video. So to get started, 
you want to have two sticky pistons like this coming out of our blocks, our jack-o'-lanterns, with blocks on their faces. Line up a line of blocks here with torches off to the side and red dust, redstone dust on top so that the default position of the pistons is extended like this. Then we'll come around the side and start here with a block and a comparator going into that. Then make a 2x3 arrangement of blocks to the side of the comparator. Place a block on the side of the comparator and another block on the catty corner to that. Get comparators again that go into those two blocks. Now redstone dust there and there, and then add a block there to prevent crosstalk. Run up a block here and leave that comparator that way. Then turn this comparator into subtraction mode. Make an L shape with blocks like this. Run a comparator going into that one with a furnace behind it and one item in that furnace. Then take a comparator here, or a repeater there, and a block going into that repeater like this, and then we can just power that block to power that repeater. So what's happening here is this arrangement of comparators, these two comparators going to blocks, is really the key to making this all work. And this arrangement here kind of works like a battery. So whatever power level you set to the redstone dust is the power level that's going to be kept between these two repeaters because the signal does not get lost. So if we take a button, let's say, and power that up, then this is at 15 power. So if we look at our F3 here, it's power of 15, and it will stay that way. And then this comparator here just takes that signal and then sends it on down the line. So to take away from that signal, we have another comparator here that's powered by a uh, furnace behind it with one block in it, so or one item in it. So that's going to make this comparator signal strength of one. This repeater here is locking that comparator so that no signal goes out. But if we unpower it for just a second, then you can see that incremented there, and our power level is now 14. You can see that in the corner. So we've essentially taken one value out of our little uh, battery here. And we can do that again and again, and it will just keep counting that way. If we power this block again, then it just goes up to 15 and it stays that way. So it's very compact, it's very convenient, and very easy to build way to make a counter. The next thing to do is to extend this down because as you know, this is only gonna bring us 15 blocks and we have 32 to go. So with this fully powered, come over here to the first block that is not powered and that's where we need to start. Basically, do the exact same thing again. With that done, we can just connect up these two repeaters here so that they can receive signal from the same place. That's temporary. So now if we power both of these, then the signal will go down all the way except for the last two blocks. We'll get to that in a second. But if we unpower this and allow these to come back a little, you'll see that it's actually taking blocks out of the middle and the side, and that's because this block is powering in both directions, and this one is also losing power in this direction. But we don't want this one to lose power at all until that one's completely done. So we need to hook up this one to that one. And we do that by throwing a torch right here and redstone dust all the way down to here. Then we can knock out these two blocks, put a block here, a torch on the side of that block, and then a block on top of it. So this torch and block here are now going to keep this at maximum level until this cell here completely runs out of power. Once again, we need to do the exact same thing, only down here and only for these two blocks. First, let's power this so we can see where we're at. And so only these two blocks don't have power yet. So I'm going to build this one actually backwards because I don't want it to go over the overhang. 
but essentially it's the exact same thing. Again, connect this cell up to the previous one the same way we had before. Torch here, redstone dust along here, knocking out these two blocks, block here, torch on its side, and a block on top. And that'll keep this locked up as long as this one has power. When we reset power on this one, we can't reset it to full, or otherwise this will go out for too far. We need to give it a power reset of two. So to do that, put a block here and a comparator going to there with a furnace behind it. Then take 14 items and stick it in there. And then that will give this comparator a power of two. Of course, we don't always want it on. So we can lock it up with a torch here and a bit of red so dust there. So now to reset it, we just hit this button. Aside from the extra layer of doors, the only thing that really complicates this build over the 32 village version, the Iron Sky, is the villager track. Because in the Iron Sky, we were able to just get away with having a villager sit directly above the, the doors here and then drop down whenever he needed to be in range. With four layers of doors, we have to have a couple different villagers at different heights at different times. And to accomplish that, uh, we use minecarts. On the east side, we go from top to bottom, and on the west side, we're going from bottom to top. So to start with, and the easiest thing to do, is to have a villager here, and he just simply gets popped up to activate the bottom level. But once he's done, and the bottom level is done, and we go up to the second level, then we switch over to this guy. And then this guy just rides the minecart up to here, and then here, and then finally here for the top level. Each one of these are two blocks apart, just as the uh, doors themselves are two blocks apart. Then for a full reset, if we ever wanted to reset the whole thing, this guy can simply drop down. This guy up at the top goes through here. This is already retracted because he's already in the off position, and he can just fly back over here and then land back here. The east side is similar to the same thing, so we just have a guy on top here, and the first thing that happens is he just gets dropped down, and he's in range of the first layer of doors down there. The second step is to bring this guy over here, and then he sits right down here. And then under here, we have a couple pistons that hold class blocks for him to sit on and for him to go to the next level we just retract that piston out and allow him to drop down finally to the bottom. Of course to make our villagers work we have this control circuit here. This control circuit uses a counter a lot like the counters that we have for the village doors and we have four repeaters on each side here that correspond to each of the four positions that the villagers need to be at. To control this, we have a monostable circuit right here that will pulse off and allow this to increment every time our loop is in a certain state. So that is connected up to an AND gate here that determines two things. The first one is that we have an item here on that part of our logic loop, and the other side of the AND gate is over here connected up to this piston. So whenever this piston gets extended, we know we're on the last village, and then that gets ended again with that comparator there, that so that we know that we're at the end of a logic loop, just like that. So in addition to that, whenever that happens, we also power the reset on both of these circuits so that all of the uh, pistons get retracted so we can start for the next cycle. The last difference between this and the Iron Sky is the Terminator. So that is actually determined by our layers. We can't determine it by that again anymore. So we have a repeater that comes off the end of this, and that simply runs into our main counter circuit, and that will turn the counter circuit off when the entire thing is built. 
Also worth mentioning here is the trap. This is quite a bit different than the one you'll find in the Iron Sky. And this one is uh, much more efficient for working with a high number of iron golems. The design is completely taken from Spire's design and leverages the fact that iron golems will be able to spawn inside of blocks as long as it's not a completely solid block. This design increases the number of spawn spaces total, but the most important thing it does is it gets the golems out of the activation area as quickly as possible, and this allows us to only have 20 villagers and still a decent throughput of iron golems as they come through. The design should be pretty easily copy copyable as, uh, from just looking at it. The only thing to make sure of is that the water here is traveling west. If it travels east, the iron golems will end up getting stuck inside the blocks. Well, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it down in the comments section. This is Hex. Bye-bye.